previously on Virtual Teen Classic Graphic Novel Reading. We're going to move on to chapter four here and as you can see i don't really need the magnifying glass for for this chapter look at it this is looking pretty sad here the title is the noose titans all right let's move on then wooden hanger you're late no i'm not i said i'd be by after dinner But now is where? Oh man, why is this? Nope. Oh. Right, there you go. Nope. But now is uh, I, I want you would climb to the roof. It's a leak in the drain pipe. Huh? Oh, a new trench coat. Wait a second. There it is. Okay, so he's putting a new trench coat on a hanger and his dad says he's late. Artie says, nope, he's not late. He said he'd be by after dinner. But now is dangerous. I want, I wanted you would climb to the roof. It's a leak in the drain pipe, huh? But I'm no good at fixing that kind of stuff. Why don't you hire somebody? Ah, you and Mala. You both think money grows on bushes. I'll fix it myself. That's crazy. You can't climb a two-story ladder in your condition. If you want, I'll pay for the handyman. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Just come sit with me. I have to pedal. Otherwise, I get a night. I get at night a leg cramp what you are holding a new tape recorder writing things down is just too hard so how much you paid only 75 bucks it was on sale <laughs> at Corvettes you could find it for maximum 35 dollars 
But skip it. Tell me about when you got back from the POW camp in 1940. When I first came home, it looked exactly so as before. I went away. It was still very luxurious. The Germans couldn't destroy everything at one time. It was 12 of us living in father-in-law's household. And it was Anya and me and our boy, Rishu, Anya's older sister, Tosha, her husband, Wolf, and their little girl, Bibi. And it was Anya's grandparents. They had maybe 90 years, but very alert. And of course, it was my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. And also the two kids from your uncle Herman and aunt Helen, Lolik and Lonya. Herman and Hella were lucky. They were visiting the New York World's Fair when the war came. This saved them. Ah, grandmother. Your stew is even tastier than I remembered. No, it's not like before the war, Vladik. I can't get the foods I need. Each of us gets coupons for eight ounces of bread a day and a tiny bit of margarine, sugar, and jam per week. That's all. I've donated a lot to the Jamindi, the Jewish community organization. And, Wolf's, and Wolf works there. So we get a little extra. And there is a, the black market. With money, you can always get anything. It's dangerous though. The Nazis took you off to a work camp for breaking any minor law. Worse, even if you don't break any laws. And those that are taken away, they're never seen again. Well, we should be happy we're all together with enough to eat. But we must really tighten our belts until the war ends. Come, let's play rummy while the ladies clear the table. Has the family been taking good care of my Bielsko textile factory? Don't you know? All Jewish businesses have been taken over by Aryan managers. I went to our factory in Lodz and they said, better go home today, old man. Tomorrow we'll carry you out. What? But isn't any money coming in? Not a single zloty. And the family wants to live the way it did before the war. Okay, Vlada, cut the cards. But Wolf, what kind of work are you doing? Just a little office work for the Genmindy, the Genmindy. But a few months ago, father-in-law took all his valuables home from the bank safe. How long can savings last? Don't worry so much, Vladik. You'll see. The war will be over like lightning. Tja, like lightning. Ugh. Wolf looked only cards. I went the next day to Mordes, Mordes Gzgul, Street. That's easy to say, huh? You say it. Here, people still made money from secret businesses, not so legal. Food coupons for Reichsmarks. 
Blotic Spiegelman? Mr. Zlicky! What are you doing in Solznovic? The Nazis moved me to an apartment here. I make uniforms for their officers and suits on the side when I can get the cloth. Are you still in business? I don't know. I just got back from war prison. Well, if you get any cloth, come see me. This note will get you past the doorman. The note told that I worked with him. Such a paper could be useful to have. I went then to the shops, what still owned, what still owed me money from before the war. But I can't pay you. A German runs my place now. I'm lucky just to have a job. Then advance me a few yards of material without coupons. Okay, okay, hide this under your clothes. Mr. Zeki, please. So I made a nice few Zlotties the very first week I came home. I remember father-in-law was so happy with me. You see, at least there's one smart guy in the family. Of course, I only said I got half what really made, what I really made. Otherwise, they wouldn't save anything. A little later, I was again on Morzgo, Morzoska, Morzoska. I think that's the way you say it, Morzoska. Looking to buy some textiles without coupons. The SS closed off the whole street to inspect the working papers from everyone. I didn't know before this. I managed to disappear into a building. But they took maybe 50% of the people away. I talked about it to father-in-law. They almost got me. I'll need more than just Izaki's note. It's true. Come, we'll visit a friend of mine who owns a tip shop. What is that? A top. A top. Owns a tin shop. Ah, tin. Okay. I think he's overseeing. I think he's his overseer can be bribed. And so it went. Okay, Vladik. Since we make things for Germany, we can get you a priority work card. Remember. If there's a roundup, run in here and pretend you're working. I learned here to do things what were useful to me when I came to Auschwitz. And so we lived more than a year, but always things came a little worse, a little worse. Father-in-law had a nice bedroom Germans looked to grab such furniture because the store in stores wasn't any more to get. Wolf and I schlepped everything valuable downstairs for a Polish neighbor to hide. Wolf, are we leaving the other bed upstairs? Ja, mother-in-law is too sick. She needs a good bed. Anya's mother had gallstones. The day the Germans came to lay, she lay in the bed. Please don't take her bed. Look how sick she is. The doctor is here every day. Father-in-law had an old friend who came always over to play cards. And they left without taking anything. You know, I met a German official who would pay well for a bedroom set. Hidden, we had no use in the furniture. So we slept it again upstairs to sell. You have excellent taste in furniture, Herr Zeigelberg. Thank you. My men will be right back to get your wife's bed too. 
You cheated us last time, Jew. Wait, I haven't been paid yet. Please, if you want to stay alive, go back inside. He was so unhappy after, so unhappy. One time I was going to see Ilzeki. This was late in 1941, I think. His house was very near to a train station. And it was going on there, something terrible. I had to pass near and they were grabbing Jews if they had papers or no. What had I to do? Will I walk slowly? They will take me. Will I run? They can shoot me. Then, from far, I see Ilzeki walking. So I went hasty over to him. Hello, Mr. Spiegelman. What are you doing here? Don't you see what's going on? Quick, come upstairs with me until the trains leave. Ozeki lived in a very fancy house. He was the only Jew there. So I sat with him and his wife a good few hours. I heard shooting and screams. He survived me, my life, that time. Survived me my life that time. Ilzeki had a son, the same age like Rishu. If you only could see how those children played together. Listen, Vladik. We can't know what's going on, what's going to happen to us. But we must keep our children safe. I have a good friend, a Pole. He's willing to hide my son until the situation gets better. I think, I think he'd take your boy too. Yes, you may be right. Let me speak with my family. But I'm telling you, it was going to be something terrible going on in our house when I even mentioned it. What? Have you gone crazy? How can you even think of giving Reishu up to complete strangers? I'll never give up my baby. Never! Ilzeki and his wife didn't come out from the war. But his son remained alive. Ours did not. And anyway, we had to give Reishu to hide a year later. When we were in the ghetto in 1943, Tasha took all the children too. Wait, please dad, if you don't keep your story chronological, I'll never get it straight. Tell me more about 1941 and 1942. Oh, so, okay. I'll make it so how you want it. 1941? At the end of 1941, the Germans came with something new. Wolf ran from the German, from the Germander. The Germander? Something tells me those are the cops, the German cops. Look, we're putting these up all over town. This is a flyer that they're putting up. All Jews of Sosnovic must be relocated to Stara. Sosnovic quarter by January 1st, 1942. Non-Jews will be moved into vacated uh, pre premises. All 12 of our household were given now to live in two and a half small rooms. Most people got even less space, but father-in-law and Wolf had a little influence. But this wasn't yet a real ghetto. Still, 
You could go into other parts of town, so long you were home at nighttime. Hold the ladder on you. I'm putting up a curtain to give us some privacy. Pasha insisted on getting a part of the, win of the room with the window. It doesn't matter, Vladik. I'm just glad the whole family can stay together. It was no more the luxury life we had before. For a couple of months, I did hear still my black market business. Then came more bad news, very bad. What's wrong, father? They just arrested my friend Nahum Cohen and his son. They've taken four Jews away for dealing goods without coupons. I did much business with Khan. The Germans in, intend to make an example of them. The next day I walked over to Mordet's Morzuska Street and I saw them. They hang there for one full week. Cone had a dry goods store. He was known all over Sosnovi. Often, he gave me cloth with no coupons. I traded also with Pfeffer, a fine young man, a Zionist. He was just married. His wife ran screaming in the street. I was frightened to go outside for a few days. I didn't want to pass where they were hanging. And maybe one of them could have talked of me to the Germans to try to save himself. Ah, when I think now of them, it still makes me cry. Look, even from my dead eye, tears are coming out. What was Anya doing at, at around this time? Houseworks and knitting, reading, and she was writing always her diary. I used to see Polish notebooks around the house as a kid. Were those her diaries? Yes, and also no. Her diaries didn't survive from the war. What you saw, she wrote after. Her whole story from the start. Oh my God, where are they? I need those for this book. Please, Artie, come with me. Uh, please, Artie, stop with the smoking. It makes me short with breath. I think it's all your peddling. Don't be so smart. What I was telling you? Yes, after the hanging, I looked for another business. I started to trade gold and jewelry. It was easier to hide than clothing. I kept things hidden in the child's stroller and I made a few zlotties. For a while, I had also a food business that I didn't yet tell you. Mr. Zarlatsy, Zarlatsk, he had a big grocery store on Mordenska. Your, your Zeilberg son-in-law, right? Come inside and wait for the rain to stop. So together we sat and spoke and he helped from time to time a customer. Sorry, you don't have enough coupons to buy a half kilo of sugar. Still, he went out with a half kilo. I, I smelled I could arrange something. Then a little more we spoke and he made it to me a proposition. Maybe we could sell my extra items to small shops in the area under the counter. It was dangerous to carry these things. But 
Maybe I could be lucky. When somebody is hungry, he looks for business. One time, I had 10 or 15 kilos of sugar to deliver. Paul, Jew, what are you carrying? What was I supposed to say? For this, I could really hang. Sugar. I'm taking over to my grocery store. Oh, you have a shop? I made so they would think it was legal. I went to the back door where I had to deliver. Open up, Poldick. I've got our sugar. And they left me go without even checking my papers. But when we came to Stara Sosnovic, all my businesses became harder. It was not so easy to move around. The tin shop finished. The owner was the only Jew they let work there. I got then a job in a German carpentry shop. Father-in-law and Lolik worked already there for really no money. I didn't need this before, but now I had to have the work papers. Wolf could have arranged me a job, but the Gemendi at the Gemendi, but I didn't want to put my hands there where Jews were being taken. And then it came again, something new from the Germans. We got a notice. All Jews over 70 years old will be transferred to the Rezistat in Czechoslovakia on May 10th, 1942. A community better prepared to take care of elderly than ours in Sosnovic. It doesn't look too bad, like a convalescent home. Anya's grandparents had about 90 years. We've been together, a family, for 70 years. We don't want to break apart now. Don't worry, we won't let them take you. We didn't know of Auschwitz, of the ovens, but we were anyway afraid. Cut away view, storage sheds, false wall, grandparents. So this is how they hid. This is how they hid themselves. We sneaked food to them, and when it was safe, we took them inside a little. Several times came the Jewish police to our house. Our records show that Mr. and Mrs. Carmiel live here. They haven't registered for transfer. Yes, my wife's parents, they left without a word a month ago. Jewish police? Yes, with big sticks. Some Jews thought in this way. If they gave to the Germans a few Jews, they could save the rest. And at least they could save themselves. A month after, they again came to my father-in-law. Mr. Zylberg, you and your wife must come with us. If the Carmios don't turn up in three days, you two will be sent in their place. We had still a little protection from the Germany, so they took only him away, not his wife. He sat a few days there. Then he sent to us a note. He wrote that we had to give over the grandparents even if they took only him away. Now, next they would grab his wife and then the rest of the family. So what happened? What, what happened? We had to deliver them. They thought it was the Therenstadt they were going, that uh, they were going. Let us know if you need anything. But they went 
right away to Auschwitz, to the gas. When did you first hear about Auschwitz? Right away, we heard. Even from there, from that other world, people came back and told us, but we didn't believe. Then this same news came more and more, so we believed. And later on, we saw even worse. After what happened to the grandparents, it was a few months quiet. Then it came posters everywhere and speeches from the Jemender. Fellow Jews, on Wednesday, August 12th, every one of you, young and old, male and female, healthy and sick, must register at the Dienst Stadium. Oh no, now what? There's no cause for alarm. It's only a matter of inspecting your documents and stamping them. This will protect you as citizens of the region. I'm not going, it's a Nazi trap. Everybody was worried. And our, and our Jewish committee is helping those murderers? God knows what will happen to us at the stadium. Well, they just inspected Jewish in some nearby towns. It was no oh, Jewish documents. Well, they just inspected Jewish documents in some nearby towns. It was no big deal. Anyway, we've got to go. Without legal papers, we're lost. To go was no good, but not to go was also no good. My father had 62, my father, he had 62 years, came by streetcar to me from Dobrowa, the village next door from Sosnovic. Here's a cookie, Rishu. Aunt Fella baked it for you. Say thank you to Grandpa. After my mother died with cancer, he lived there in the house of my sister Fella and her four small children. I need your advice, Vladik. Should I go to the stadium on Wednesday or hide at home? I don't know. I'm not even sure what we're going to do. Anya's mother says she isn't going. She's sick and afraid. At least Anya's father, Lolik, and I work all work at the German wood shop. We're a little safer. But I don't work. You have no papers. You don't have anything. Well, our cousin Mordecai says he'll be at one of the inspection tables. I could bring my papers to him. What does Fella say? She's not sure. But if Fella decides to go, of course, I'll go with her. Can I have another cookie? Rishu. Really, I didn't know how to advise him. But finally, he did go. People were afraid to not show up. So it came to the stadium, almost all the Jews of Sosnovic and from the other villages near, maybe 25 or 30,000 people. This is a big scene. You can see it over there at the top. Everyone's crowded around the town square. Let's see what it says. Everyone came very nice dressed. And they tried so that they would look young and able to work in order to get a good stamp on their passport. When we were everybody inside Gestapo with machine guns surrounded the stadium. When we were inside, Gestapo with machine guns surrounded the stadium. Line up by family at the tables to register quickly. Then was a selection 
with people set either to the left or to the right. Old people, families with lots of kids, and people without work cards are all going to the left. We understood this must be very bad. Me and Anya came to the table where my cousin was sitting. Ah, you work at the carpentry shop. Go to the right. So we got stamped our passports and came quick to the good side of the stadium. Those they sent to the left, they didn't get any stamp. We were so happy we came through, but we worried now. Were our families safe? Look, there's Papa with Lolik and Lonya. We saw Wolf and Tasha. Our family seems to be okay. Did you see my father? I couldn't see anywhere of my father. But later, someone who saw him told me, he came through this same cousin over to the good side. Spiegelman, to the right. Then came Fella to register. Her they sent to the left. Four children was too many. Fella! My daughter, how can she manage alone with four children to take care of? And what do you think? He sneaked to the bad side. And those on the bad side never came anymore home. Those with a stamp were left to go home. But there were very few Jews now left in Soznovic. One from three they kept at the stadium, maybe 10,000 people, and with them, my father. Well, it's enough for today. Yes, Artie? Woo, I overdid a, a little. I'm feeling dizzy. Maybe you should lie down a while. Are you finished? Uh-huh. My father's worn out. He's taking a nap. He was just telling me about the time everyone in Sosnovic had to get his passport stamped. In the stadium? Yes. They got my mother then. She was taken with everyone else who was going to be deported to four apartment houses that were emptied to make a sort of prison. They put thousands of people there. It was so crowded that some of them actually suffocated. No food, no toilets. It was terrible. People jumped out of the windows to end their misery a little quicker. God. My mother survived that. Her brother was on the Jewish committee and he hid her in a coal cellar till all the transports left. Then he got me a job scrubbing the people's filth, vomit, excrement, out of several apartments, and I managed to smuggle her out. Eventually, she and my father both ended up in Auschwitz. They died there. Where are you going? You didn't drink your coffee. I just thought of something my father mentioned that Anya used to keep a diary, and I vaguely remember seeing them on his shelves in the den. I doubt it. I would have noticed them. Well, there's so much junk in there, it's worth a shot. Look at all this stuff. Old menus he picked up on cruises. A pile of stationery from the Pines Motel? Hotel? Incredible. Four 1965 Dry Dock Savings Bank calendars. I'll bet he never even had an account there. He drives me crazy. He won't even let me throw out a plastic pitcher he took from his hospital room last year. He's more attached to things than people. I really don't know how long I can take him. I really don't. I better be getting home. I'll look for those diaries next time. 
wait, put everything back exactly like it was, or I'll never hear the end of it. Okay, okay, relax. Wow. Must not have been very easy to have family that went through such a terrible struggle hearing the stories. Horrible, but they're important. They're very important to know these stories. That's why this, this storytelling that Art does, Art Spiegelman, that's why he won a Pulitzer Prize for, for his work on Mouse. So anyway, as you can see, we're on the slide for chapter five, which means we're done for today. That took quite a while, but I hope you guys are all right with that. Anyway, Mr. Tony, chap in the cap. I hope to see you guys next time. When we continue reading Mouse, we're going to go with Chapter 5, the title of which is Mouse Holes. Okay, good to see you. Take care.